Hey, this is Paolo from the MB Academy, and in today's video, we're gonna be learning how to make good sub basses. So make sure you're wearing headphones on this tutorial. And we're gonna be doing that with a track from Icicle, who, by the way, has a full start to finish course on our website. You just gotta go to dmbacademy.com. But anyway, this is a reference, is a track Dreadnought. And this is my recreation of the sub. If we put it against the original, that is what we get. But before we get started with the video, make sure you get subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss any of your future videos. And if you're already subscribed, share this video with someone who you think may like this. Also, don't forget that if you want to get access to the preset and the project files, you can become a member of Preset Pass. The link is in the description below. And once again, if you want more in-depth lessons and tutorials, we have many courses with pro artists. And we also have a lot of production resources like presets and sample packs on our website. You just gotta visit dmbacademy.com. So, let's get into the video. Okay, so here I have an initial patch. We're just playing E0 and D sharp. And there are two main things that we're going to be focusing on the sound. First, the harmonics, and number two, the movement of those harmonics. So traditionally, a lot of producers just tell you to build your sub bass out of a sine wave, like this. Then maybe apply a little bit of distortion or like soft clipping to it to make it louder and then to just apply some gain. And that is your sub bass right there. And that is a totally valid workflow, but when you want to introduce movement to this sub bass, it becomes a bit harder to have more control over all the different elements that build the sound. For example, we have no way of moving this harmonic right here. So I just want to introduce you to a new workflow right here. That one being creating yourself via an additive synthesis approach. So if we get a sine wave right here, we can see that we just have one harmonic, this one right here. Now, if we add distortion, we can clearly see how we generate more harmonics. Now, this is just one way, but again, if you do this, it's very hard to have a good control over the second, third, fifth harmonic, etc., etc. So how I built this sound was I went into the harmonics window and I just added my fundamental. And then from here, I just added another harmonic here on bin number three. And now I have two harmonics that are in the same level, sort of. Here, this one is louder than the fundamental. So, approaching building sub bass through this additive synthesis mindset is very cool because you can add another oscillator, for example. Let's set this into a sine wave. And then place this sine wave in a spot that makes sense in terms of the harmonic series of the sound. So for example, the next harmonic on this series will be the octave. And we can tell because if we were to bring something like a saw wave here, and we filtered everything here, we will just have the first harmonic and the second one. And obviously we have more because of the rollout of the filter. But in terms of the harmonic series of different waveforms, the saw wave always starts with a fundamental and then the octave of that one and then a fifth of that one, so on and so on. The square wave starts with the first harmonic, the fundamental, but then the second harmonic is not the octave of it, it's one octave and seven semitones up, so it will be one fifth. So for example, when we are distorting a sine wave like this, and we add distortion, if you think about it, we're turning this waveform into a square wave and because of that, we are getting a square wave-ish harmonic sequence. So, for example, when you're building sub and you want a more full sound, you can add the octave of it to get a saw wave-ish series of harmonics, or you can go straight into the third one or the odd harmonics and get square-like harmonics. So for example, if we put this at zero, 
So if we play this in the third harmonic, we will get the fifth of the fundamental. Cool. So going back to this, how I built the sound was learning about that concept, placing a simple sine wave, and then just pitching this one octave and seven semitones up, and boosting the fundamental to be louder than this one, and then apply a different movement to the second harmonic, which as you can see already, is giving us a more interesting result than just distorting a simple sine wave. Now, obviously there are some fixes that you need to do, for example, adding some attack and adding some release, some mono and legato, and maybe portamento in case two notes overlap to get rid of the clicks. And then it's all about playing with this LFO right here. So for example, to build this specific sound, I removed the BPM function right here and then I automated this Hertz rate. I removed the anchor of the LFO so it doesn't click. It clicked right there, but that's because of the DAW stopping the audio. And then I play with the different levels of this oscillator. So the only thing that I needed was to automate this rate. And so let me show you how I did this on the DAW. So this is the automation that I did. And next, the only thing that I did was I went back into Serum and I added some gain with a compressor. Now if we play this on top of the other track. It sounds actually good. So in reference. They sound identical. And one very important thing is that you can use this method to build virtually any soft that you want. For example, let's say you wanted this to turn into a liquid bass. What I would do is I would get this up and then I would stack different harmonics or different variations of this harmonic sequence on top of it like this. And then obviously I would go back and change the sequence. Something like this. You know the deal. So yeah, you can use this method to build any sub bass for any track that you're working on. And I think that's the most valuable thing to learn from this, from this lesson. So that's going to be it for the sound and also for this video. If you liked it, make sure to get subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell to not miss any future videos. And if you want to get access to a preset in the project files, you can become a member of Preset Pass. The link is in the description below. Don't forget that if you want to get more in-depth lessons and tutorials, we have many courses, including Icicle's course, which is the artist featured in today's tutorial. And we also have a lot of production resources like presets and sample packs on our website. You just got to visit dmbacademy.com. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Hey guys, this is Icicle and this is my course on production. Uh, in this course I'm taking you through my entire workflow, the way that I usually work, starting off with drum strum design, uh, bass design, different types of sound design for leads and music, pads, so on, and eventually structure and mix down. Um, I hope you enjoy, I've really tried to stick to the basic principles of how I work so that you can take them and then develop them in, into something of your own. Um, so yeah, I hope that you enjoy, big up.